1960s. The government has admitted that bacteria was released into the atmosphere at sites near Weymouth and Dorchester, as well as on Portland and Lyme Bay. But it says there was no risk to public health, Andrea Thomas reports. At the height of the Cold War, experiments into the threat of biological warfare were considered vital. At four sites in Dorset, MOD scientists were told to release simulants that mimicked biological germs into the atmosphere to see how they reacted. But local residents were never told about the experiments. When the public appeared to be, be used as a guinea pig, as appears to have been the case by these reports, then this is uh, very alarming indeed. And, and there needs to be a very fullest uh, investigation into what happened and the effects on the local population. In a statement today, the Ministry of Defence emphasised there was no threat to public health. The tests use completely harmless biological simulants and there was no risk to the public. Anybody who's got an ounce of common sense and scientific knowledge will know that all around us at this moment in time are millions and millions of bacteria. Uh, and quite frankly, this was perfectly safe uh, and that uh, there was no cause we for alarm. We were in a small open boat and the eyes were streaming and I thought that the Navy had been practicing war games and they'd released tear 1963, gas. In 1963, they show the ship's tracks as clouds of bacteria were released on board. As they drifted towards land, scientists at 22 sampling posts investigated how the organisms behaved in the air. The Southwest has a long association with chemical and biological weapons testing. In the early 50s, chemical defence establishment Nance Cuke in Cornwall was one of the most secret places in Britain. Its job was to produce chemical weapons like deadly sarin nerve gas to counter the perceived threat from Russia. The Dorset experiments were carried out in the same Cold War era. They continued into the 1970s, but details from that decade are still an official secret. Today, Dorset councillors went to Whitehall to lobby the MOD for an inquiry. Ministers have assured them the released germs were harmless and are considering mounting a public exhibition of the trials and talking to local health experts. But the delegation was far from satisfied. I think that at the end of the day, most of the public will realise that certain things are carried out by governments which are secret, such as germ warfare testing, but they will also say we're living in 1997, not 30 years ago, and it's time that the shroud of secrecy was lifted on some of the government activity. The South Dorset MP, Ian Bruce, who previously dismissed calls for an inquiry, led today's delegation and has suggested that the then Defence Secretary, Lord Healy, should reveal what he knew of the experiments. A review of health records is now being considered. For local people, there are still many questions to be answered about the secret activities now that took South place Dorset on their MP shore. Ian Bruce. Now, last month on this programme, you said the calls for a full investigation were overkill. That was your quote. What exactly is your position now? Well, I'm very surprised at uh, what the mayor has just said on your programme because he didn't ask for a public inquiry when he got in front of the minister. In fact. All the councillors agreed that, in fact, that was an overkill themselves. They've actually asked uh, for information. We had a full briefing today exactly about what was going on, and quite rightly, and I agree with them, the Ministry is going to send some people down with the information, the photographs, and all the information that is available to them uh, to tell people who want to come along and see what happened back then. Well, I do apologise. We're obviously having, obviously having problems with the our defense links. Defence Secretary Michael Portillo, who first revealed details of the experiments in reply to a parliamentary question. But on the campaign trail in Plymouth today, he considered the Defence Secretary of the day, Lord Healy, was better placed to offer reassurances. I would certainly like to uh, get to the bottom of it, but I think first of all we should ask Dennis Healy what he knows. Those closely associated with the experiments would also like to know more. For their sakes, Dorset Health Authority has now written to the Ministry of Defence asking for full details of all the tests. Well, earlier I spoke to Dr Brian Barmer, an expert on biological warfare. I first asked if he felt that the Dorset tests were safe. Well, it depends how safe safe is. Um, they certainly didn't use pathogens. They didn't use disease-causing organisms. Um, but any bacteria as far as I understand, I'm not a microbiologist, but as far as I understand any bacteria can be dangerous um, in certain circumstances and certainly the ones they used have been associated with say outbreaks in hospitals 
And what was behind the test? What were the scientists exactly trying to find out? Well, the aims were twofold. First of all, they wanted to find out how vulnerable the coast of Britain was to an attack from a ship off the coast to a germ warfare attack. And secondly, they wanted to know whether we could actually detect these things. And over what period of time did these kinds of tests continue? Well, they go back to um, just after the Second World War. A number of tests were made off the coast of Scotland. A number of tests were made in the Bahamas using actually pathogenic organisms, using disease-causing organisms. Uh, there were a number of trials in the London Underground uh, using non-pathogenic organisms, such as the ones in the test off, off the co south coast. So they had been going on for some time. And briefly, do you think there could be more information yet to be revealed? I certainly think so. Um, materials released every 30 years, and I was surprised at this year's set of releases, so there's bound to be more. Dr. Brian Barber, thank you very much indeed for joining us.